Hello. Hello everyone and welcome to a video by Einstein's workshop. My name is Adam and we're going to show you a cool 2D animation software that you can use at home. So if you're trying to find something to do with your time and maybe learn a new skill, um, this will be a cool application for you to use. And uh, to start off, let's show you how to get this tool. Uh, if you are on our website, which we are not currently, you uh, can go to the website that we're going to send out that has all of our virtual learning opportunities. And under our online apps and tools, you'll find something called Pencil 2D. So if you just go ahead to that icon and click it, it'll bring you to the Pencil 2D animation website, which you can download. There's also tutorials and all kinds of cool resources on this website, obviously. This is an open freeware piece of software that you can use. Uh, so when you click on download, it'll bring you to another page. And depending on if you have Windows, Mac, uh, again, if you're, if you're a kid and you might need a parent's help to download this stuff, um, please do that. And uh, once it downloads, there is one thing. There's no install for this. It's just going to be, um, you're just going to go ahead and um, unpack it and drop it into a folder. And then you can go ahead and once you're done with that, open it up. You will have your animation software. So let's go ahead and start a new program real quick. So real quick, just a little bit about the interface that we have looking at in front of us. Obviously, this is our white page, kind of like a piece of paper we're going to be drawing on. On the left here, we have our tools. So here are a number of tools that you can play with. Um, so you have a pencil, an eraser, a selector tool. Uh, this is for making just lines. Okay. Um, you can move things around with the hand. Uh, you have a pen tool. We'll, we'll get back to playing with these in just a second. All right. Under here are the tool options. So every time you click on a tool, you might have some options that you can change. So for example, if I click the pencil tool, um, I have an option of changing the width. So I can make it a thinny, well, it's not even that thin of a line, thin line, uh, to a thick line, to a super thick line. You can see it gives me a little bit of a um, little round circle around to see how big my brush is at that time. Uh, same thing with an eraser and make it big. I usually like my erasers pretty big, so you'll see it was already set to pretty big. Uh, feathering means if you, um, you'll see there's like two lines. So feathering means that if I have like some sort of uh, drawing and I need to erase it, the feather is going to be where it like blurs the edges a little bit. So that's what feathering is. Uh, more feathering is less. I'll tell the point where it's almost none. There go. Uh, zero feathering means it's just a hard line. Let's get rid of that blob. <clears throat> uh, a couple other options you can play with there. Um, pressure, that's going to be for if you are using a tablet and you have a pen. I'm using a mouse right now. And I would suggest you use a mouse or uh, if you have access to a pen and a tablet, that's great. Uh, but mouse works fine. Um, I would not suggest trying to use the trackpad. It's just really hard to draw. You're probably going to get frustrated, and that, that's just no fun. Um, so, yeah, so we're going to come back to tools in just a minute, but that's the options underneath. Uh, now, underneath here is a window called display. Very important here that you click on show invisible lines. So that's going to be in the top row with this little triangle and the dots. The next icon is onion skin previous frame and the next icon is onion skin the color red so we're we'll make sure we turn all three of those on real quick and we'll come back to why that was so necessary momentarily over here is our color wheel our color wheel is uh, really cool um, if you've never seen one before it allows us to choose colors an almost infinite number of colors so around the edge, I can choose red, yellow, green, light blue, dark blue, purple, and back to red. And in the middle, you'll see in the square that the colors change. So let's say I want a bright blue. Well, I can come over here to blue, and then I can click in the middle here. So down here, you'll see this is where the actual color that I've selected is. So I'm going to move it up. Whoops, super bright blue. OK. 
okay? Um, but I could also make it a darker sea green blue. Or maybe I don't need any green at all. So I take this down and now I've just got like a dark blue. So the main big circle around controls the primary color we're working, we have, and then the middle controls uh, a gradient. So dark to light, white and black color. Down here, so then there's some fine controls down here. You can play with those, but this color wheel should be able to get you most of what you need. And underneath that is a color palette, uh, which I wanna show you how to use. Color palette can be really helpful because it allows you to save colors for later. So especially where you're working with animations and you might be using a color over and over again, but you're using several colors, this palette can help out a lot, okay? All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is just draw a picture. And this is the first thing I'd like you to do is just draw a picture. So come back here to tools and we're gonna start with the pencil tool. So again, pencil tool, I'm gonna allow you to change the width. Um, now you don't have to draw what I'm doing. I'm just going to show you a couple of the tools real quick, and then I would like you to just try drawing a picture. Okay, so that is the pencil tool. The eraser I obviously already showed you. Select tool we won't really need just yet, um, nor this arrow tool, um, but we do have a pen tool. A pen tool kind of gives us a, kind of a squiggly, kind of hard line. You'll notice it's a little less feathery, as we talked about, than the pencil. Um, hand tool just moves the canvas around, so that's just gonna move our canvas around. Um, we talked about the polyline tool. This is a tool that just allows us to make some um, straight lines, so we're just clicking here. Not clicking and dragging, just clicking, clicking, clicking. Okay, and a paint bucket. Paint bucket will allow us to fill things in. Okay, doesn't really like to fill in the poly apparently. Ah, this is great. So it's gonna ask me if I want occasionally, this is one of the pieces of reasons I like this piece of software is it's gonna ask me, my animation's not saved yet, do I wanna save it now? I'm gonna say yes. Now if you know much about where to save things, you have your file system here, you can uh, go and save your files in the right place if you know how to do that. If you don't, you can go ahead and save it to your computer. Mine's telling me that this animation already exists, so I'm going to say, no, I don't want to replace it. I'm just going to rename it. And I'm going to say, first. First time. And save it. We can go back and, you know, find that later if we need to. Okay. Uh, but it's nice that it asks you, and it will keep auto-saving as we, as we go along. So that's another really great feature. Uh, the dropper tool allows us to grab a color. So let's say... See, I've drawn with a color, and oh no, I lost my blue. Well, I can use this paint dropper to go over and select my blue, and it'll say, oh, that's the blue I had. But again, we're also going to use the color palette down here for that. Paintbrush. Paintbrush is really just a f finer way of getting a whole lot done. You can do like really hard lines and soft lines. It's good for coloring. Okay. And finally, the smudge tool. I like to just smudge things. On my computer, it goes super slow, so I might recommend not using the smudge tool. Another important thing to know about this piece of software is this is an animation software. If you're looking to just draw, um, I would suggest doing some of our other softwares. Um, we might be having some tutorials on, or you can find on that website I just showed you. Um, this is an animation software. If you go kind of crazy just doodling, um, it, it's going to lock up because it's going to need too much memory to try and keep in mind what you're doing. Um, so this, you kind of have to have a little bit of focus on the animation part. All right. So if you have a minute, why don't you go ahead and draw a picture um, just to kind of get used to these tools. You could draw, you know, a tree landscape. You could draw a smiley face. You could draw an ice cream cone. Uh, you could draw a dog, a cat, you know, draw the couch. I don't know. Um, just play a little bit with these tools up here just to get a little bit of a feel for them. Pause this video and you can come back. All right, so if you kind of pause this video and you've come back again, um, we're gonna move on to animating. So to animate something, we have down here the tools for animation, okay? Now, on the left-hand side, you'll see it says bitmap player, layer, vector layer, and camera layer. Um, we're gonna go ahead and click 
off vector layer because we're not going to be using that one today. So you can just click that one right off by clicking that little circle next to it. And then we're going to click bitmap layer. Now, this is where things do get a little bit tricky. Um, there's a drag bar at the bottom so I can move back and forth. So I'm going to go all the way to the front and you should see a red line here over the number one. This is our timeline where we're starting. And in here, if I move it to the side a little bit, you can see this little cube. This is my page essentially. Okay. So right now, if I drag this right over, we're looking at page number one on my bitmap layer. Okay. So to make an animation, Essentially, we're drawing a sequence of pictures, and as those pictures play out, it'll look like something's moving, right? So let's go ahead and start with something basic. Um, let's go ahead and start with a flapping bird, which I like to start with. Ah. So I'm going to draw a little bird, okay? Give him a beak. Oop. Hello. Okay. Um, my little bird, and he is going to be flapping his wings, okay? So I have my first frame, here's my bird. So I have a couple options of how I can progress to my next scene. Down here, you'll see a, a button where it says keys, and there's two plus symbols and a minus symbol. The first plus symbol says add a frame, that's gonna allow us to add a blank frame, okay? I'm gonna do that first just to show you what that looks like. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a frame. Now, hopefully you see a red line of what you just did. Now, why do we see that? Well, hopefully you've done this already. If you haven't, do it again or do it now. Over here by display, it says show invisible lines. Click that. And here, onion skin previous frame, click that. And onion skin red. Okay. What an onion skin is, is it's, 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 it's like ogres. They have layers. They have an onion skin is going to show you the previous draw so that I can then copy this one. Oop. Okay, but then I can change what I want to change from my next frame. Okay. I can add another frame. Now, Pencil 2D is going to keep up to five frames. You see that little window pop up? That was just it saving for me real quick. So it's actually going to keep five copies of this. Now, you'll notice, uh, you know what, I'm actually going to go ahead and erase that. Oop, that was really bad. You'll notice that their frames are just building up and building up. Okay, so right now I'm just going for the downswing here. And once I get to five frames, it should get rid of my first frame. One more. This is adjustable in preferences too. My bird's getting really weird looking. That's okay. There we go. So you'll see it took away my first my first ones. So now my first ones are gone. All right. I just did my downswing for my bird. So now I'm gonna take come down here. And what's important to know is that I can only change the frame that I'm currently on with my red bar. So I can click it where the number is and I can drag back. I can see my bird's flapping. Okay. Now if I want to actually animate it, over here are my play buttons. So I have, I can go back a frame, forward. I like to turn on loop, which is this little arrow that goes around itself because it allows me to see it over and over again. Then over here you have the FPS. This is frames per second. So how many of these little pictures are going to appear in one second? Higher numbers mean that more of these pictures are going to appear in one second, meaning they're going to go really fast. Also means you need a lot of frames to get even a very short animation. Lower numbers, like five and below, mean the frames go a little bit lower. So I can spread them out a little further. It's only five frames per second. I'm going to go ahead and start this should see my bird flapping his wings. I can go up. All right, if I show you go up fast, much faster. All right, cool. 
So now I can drag my red bar. Now remember, I can't edit my frame until I move this red bar all the way back up to the top. Okay, now I can edit this frame again. I want to show you something that works a little bit better. So I'm going to go ahead and actually remove this frame. So I'm going to use this minus button. We hadn't talked about that yet. That's the minus button. I'm going to go ahead and remove all my frames. I'm going to try this again. I'm going to make my bird. I don't know why I gave him such extreme eyes that time. There we go. Okay. So we learned how to add a frame. We learned how to remove a frame just now. And now I'm gonna show you how to duplicate a frame. Duplicating a frame means gonna take this exact frame and copy it. What does that mean? Well, that means I can actually go ahead and just erase these wings like that. You'll notice that after I erase the wings, the red line shows up because that's the onion skin from the previous slide. And now I can just edit that one. I'll go ahead and duplicate it again. So remember this time I'm using the second plus symbol. See that? Just saved it again. Well, oh. I must have done something wrong here because I lost my frame. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that frame. I'm going to do it again. Duplicate frame, there we go. We'll go back and watch the tape and see what I just did wrong. Okay, another one. As you can see, this takes a little while. Um, what I found is that when I got into an animation I really liked, like I started doing the astronaut, I suddenly got really excited about it and I really like wanted to make the next frames and then I wanted to make the next frames because I got a cool idea in my head that I wanted to explore, you know? Um, so now I'm going to go back and I'm actually going to raise the, going a little further here in my animation. Um, it's going to go to duplicate. Nice. I got really into it. So, you know, um, if you're not really into what you're doing, don't do it, find something else. I'm sure there's like a cool animation that you would think might be cool. Maybe uh, maybe it's a scene of a car chase. Um, maybe it's a fantasy thing. Um, you know, maybe it's animals. Maybe, maybe you just wanna like make an animated card for somebody. I mean, you know, sometimes people would like a little card, especially right about now. And, Everyone's cooped up like a little card. Okay, and then, oh, actually, one more. Bird's really stretching. And then I'm gonna do again. You'll notice the old ones are starting to disappear. Now they're like five back. Come back down real quick. Okay, here we go. One more to get almost back to where we were all right now if i go ahead and play this so by duplicating i don't change the head so it's a little bit easier for me to manage this way all right cool so uh that's how you make an animation i mean honestly you could do a lot with just this information um, I'm going to show you some cool tricks real quick just to help you uh, speed up your process. But, you know, there you go. There's something that will get you by. Um, you can do a lot with just hand free hand drawing what you're working on, using that onion skin to reference your other scenes and keep moving forward. But let me go ahead and show you a couple more tricks. I'm going to stop this video. All right. So. I got my bird flapping, but he's not really going anywhere. So let's make it look like he's moving. And we can do that with a couple illusionary tricks. Uh, so one thing we can do, over here on the left, we have layers, okay? Layers are like if we could put another piece on top of the piece that we just worked on. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and add one more layer. And we're gonna add a new bitmap layer. It's gonna ask us, what do we wanna name that bitmap layer? I'm gonna say, trees okay cool 
Now, uh-oh, these trees are all the way back here. Notice my red timeline bars all the way up here. My trees are all the way back here. I'm going to click that red bar and I'm going to go all the way back to my trees. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another object. Now, why would I want to create another layer? I could just do it right on the bitmap layer. Well, the thing is these two layers are separated now. So if I come down here, I can click on this one. I can work on this, work on my bird. I click on trees, I can work on my trees that I'm gonna draw in a second. Um, it keeps things separated so that I don't accidentally erase things that I already did on another layer. So I, if I'm working on my trees layer, I can't erase my bird, okay? So that's really important. Um, if I was on my bird layer, my bitmap layer, then I could, and I don't wanna do that. So let's go ahead and we're gonna make my bird flying high over the trees. So I'm going to come over here, I'm going to grab my pencil, I'm going to over here, and I find a nice color for my trees. Actually, I'm going to use my paintbrush on this one, okay? All right, now I can use the hand here to move around a little bit. I'm going to use my hand tool to move just a little bit to the side, and then I'm going to draw some trees, okay? And again, I'm going to make it so that my bird's pretty high up. He's going to be flying. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to draw right off this canvas here. Okay, right off. And then I'm going to go, I'm going to get some browns. So browns are usually kind of like a reddish. But then you go over into the gradient and you go a little darker. That's pretty good. Go ahead and add some trunks here. I'm not going fancy right now. Hand move over. Okay, cool. And I might even go back and add just a little more texture by adding a little bit of lightness to the tops of my trees. Oop, that's not great. Um, what I just did there was an undo. You can find that under edit um, up here and you can undo. So that means you just literally take the last piece off. Um, control Z if you are you know how to use keystrokes, but undo will just get things away. All right, don't take too much time here. So now let's create a little bit of a trick here. I'm going to make this bird look like it's flying by moving the trees underneath him, okay? I'm gonna make sure my timeline is to the number one where the box is for my trees, okay, that I just made. And I'm gonna hit my selection tool. So this is kind of cool. So this is a way of moving objects. Hit my selection tool. I can go to edit and I can select all. And I should get a box around just the trees that I just made, okay? Um, actually, I'm going to start them here for this one. So I'm going to hit, I'm going to click off. There's no box. And I'm going to come down. I'm going to duplicate my frame just like I did before. Edit, select all. Then I'm going to go over here to this arrow, move tool. Move tools are super cool. I'm going to click on it and take my trees and move them a little bit. See how the red's there? That means that's where it was before. A little bit. Click off. One important thing is you want to make sure that you've clicked off and gotten rid of, we call those the ants, the little um, dashed border around. Make sure that's gone before you click the next one. Cool. So now I'm on my third, edit, select all. I can just move it a little bit. There go, click off of it, new, edit, select all, move it. Click off, new, edit, select all, move it, click, select all, move it, click off, new, edit, select all, move it, cool. And now for this last bit, I'm actually going to go ahead and make it look like he's going to start flying upwards all of a sudden. So I'm going to go select all, start moving it down. You'll see why I'm going to do that in just a second. 
um, new frame. Edit, select all. Sometimes it's hard to keep track of what you've been doing. Just pay attention. New frame, edit, select all, move it. New frame, edit, select all, move it. Okay, cool. And then for my last frame, I can either create a new, I can either duplicate my old frame and then erase this, or I can just click new frame and that'll just put a blank frame in there. Remember, new frame just creates a new blank frame. Now we can create a little bit of an illusion of movement here. A little bit weird because it's like sideways, but you get the idea. This is how I made the rocket guy. He's looking like he's walking across the grass and I'm essentially erasing his feet and redrawing them and the grass is just moving underneath even though he's not moving. Cool. Now for the last part, thing I'm gonna show you is kind of how I did that flying through the sky action. So another way of creating some movement, go ahead and stop this. I'm gonna go ahead and add another layer. So I'm gonna add to trees, I'm gonna go to trees, or I'm sorry, not trees. I'm gonna go to layers, I'm gonna click add layer. New bitmap layer, sky. Okay. Okay, now for this one, I don't need the sky yet necessarily, or I could, but I would like to show you a trick. So let's say I don't need a sky yet. I can just go ahead to wherever I'm gonna start my sky right here, and I can just go ahead and add a frame. Not like that. Make sure whenever you're deleting a frame, you move the red timeline to where you want to be. Okay. Okay. So the reason that happened was because I was not clicked on the right, I was still clicked on trees. I need to make sure I was clicked on sky and that my timeline was in the right place. Again, this is where the trickiness comes in a little bit, but if you give yourself a little bit of time and maybe one or two animations that don't work out and you keep coming back and trying it again, you'll get it. So for that, I created a new bitmap layer. Then I moved my timeline to where I wanted to start. And then I made sure that I clicked on the right layer and went ahead and added a new, a new one, a new frame. Okay. Now from here on, my bird's not actually gonna move. He's just gonna look like he's soaring with his wings tucked. I'm gonna go ahead and clear my palette over here. Quick, I don't need any of that. Okay. And I'm gonna show you how to make a moving sky. So for this, I'm gonna grab my paintbrush, pretty big width, and a uh, high feather. Okay. okay. And I'm gonna start with a light blue. And I'm just gonna scribble some light blue on the top. Now I can come off because it only really cares about where the page is, okay? Now, I'm gonna go ahead over here to my color palette and I'm gonna hit this little plus add color. That's gonna add an, uh, that color to my, and it gives it kind of a cool color, a name, brilliant bluish green to my um, thing. And then I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this frame and I'm gonna add a little more. And duplicate. And you know what, when you make this brush even bigger, a little more duplicate and a little more duplicate and a little more all right now my birds disappeared why is that because the layer of the sky is actually over my bird so see how my bird is actually this one this bitmap layer my sky is actually above it what I can do is I can click that and I can drag it until it gets below my bird now my bird is over my sky much better Okay, now I'm going to select a darker blue. Okay, and I'm going to start doing the same thing. Add, and oh, I wanna make sure I save this in my palette. Cause if I wanted to say start a double transition at some point here, I could add a third color. Start that one up here, and then I could use my palette to keep going with this one down here. 
So now I have this, I can say, okay, this is gonna be the light blue, this is gonna be my light blue. blue. Oh, here it goes, nice big save here. Okay, this is about where I'm gonna end this video anyway, because you guys get a really good idea of what's going on here. So I'm just go ahead and play this. See so what it looks like. My bird's gonna be flying, then he goes, soars up into the sky. Cool. Remember, I can speed that up or slow it down, my frames per second. Now, if I was really getting into this, obviously I'd probably make some new bitmaps, make some clouds, um, you know, have the bird doing some stuff. I'd probably color the bird in, make him look a lot better so he doesn't look quite so weepy, but that's okay. Um, so that's how you make the video. Now let's save it. So the nice thing is it's been saving uh, our, our file the whole time. So we just go ahead and click save again if we'd like, but it's been doing a nice job of it. And then to export it, we come up here to File, go to Export, and I can export it as a few things, a movie, an image sequence, an image. Animated GIFs are kind of cool, so this is a graphical uh, interface, graphical image format. And it, it appears as a image, even though it's actually a movie, which is kind of cool. So I can go ahead and export that and say, hey, where do you want to put that? you need any help with this, please make sure you ask your parents to make sure you put it in the right place. I'm actually just gonna put it right there. I'm gonna name it bird. And, uh, you know, when you come from the camera layer, we didn't touch the camera layer because that's a fine window for us. With height, start frame, end frame. Loop it, sure. I can make it not loop a loop. Okay, it's going to rip that real quick. And finish, open the file location. Yeah, send me to it. It's going to send me over there. And now when I click on it, it should show me my bird. Cool. All right, well, hope you guys had a good time. Again, this is Pencil 2D. You guys can use this at home if you would like. And uh, hopefully you find some fun here and doing something cool. Thanks, everyone, and keep coming back to check out more awesome content from Einstein's Workshop. Bye, guys.